Hi, this is Andy from GPS Training. In this video, we're going to take a look at our recommendation for best mid-range, mid-priced Garmin GPS multi-activity unit. So this is a handheld unit suitable for hiking, walking, road cycling, mountain biking, geocaching, and many other outdoor activities. So it's what we call a multi-activity unit. So the model that we're going to look at today is Garmin's Etrex Touch 35. Now the version that we keep in stock is actually the 35T, which means it's got Garmin's topoactive European mapping for 46 countries loaded on the unit. A great background map if you are going abroad or if you're road cycling, it's a great map for road cycling or your sort of lower level recreational walking covering all of Europe on the unit. You also get with this unit Garmin's GB Discoverer 1 to 50k full country mapping. That's basically all of the Ordnance Survey 1 to 50 Land Ranger maps for all of Great Britain, which is just over 200 maps. They come installed on a micro SD card that we put in the back of the unit for you. So we're just going to open up the box to see what you actually get inside the box with the Touch 35T. So you get GPS trainings little checklist if you buy a unit from ourselves just to show that we've went through all of the activity profiles, check they're all set up correctly for using in the unit. UK and we update the software for you and test the mapping before the unit goes out so you know it's all ready to go other than you putting your batteries in the unit. So you get our little checklist with the unit. You also get obviously the unit which we're going to take a closer look at and if we just open up the box we can see here we've got the map box for the GB Discoverer 1 to 50 maps. This map card is actually worth £200 when bought on its own so it's great value when you get this mapping bundled with the unit on top of the European mapping. So that's the Ordnance Survey 1 to 50 map card box. You also get in the unit a USB cable, and with it being a multi activity unit, there's actually a bike mount as well, a cycle mount, so you can clip the unit onto the handlebars of your bike. You get some tie clips that just slot through the back of the cycle mount, and the cycle mount itself just slides on the back of the unit. There's a little spine on the back of the unit. And you just slide it on and then it locks in place. You hear a clip when it's locked in place. So you click when it's locked in place. And then that'll slide onto the handlebars of your bike. So that's what you get in the box. I'm just going to pack this back up. And then I'm going to bring a unit over that we've already got turned on. So we can have a closer look at the unit. So this is an upgrade from the Touch 25. And I'll go through some of the extra features that the Touch 35T has. And obviously this is the bundle with the 1 to 50 Ordnance Survey mapping. So I'm just going to bring over a unit that I've already got turned on here. This unit's actually got the silicon bumper surround that you can buy as an accessory just to protect the edges of the unit. So the unit itself, it's a nice compact size. It's reasonably lightweight, obviously great for fitting in the palm of your hand or putting on the handlebars of your bike. It's a 2.6 inch colour touchscreen, sunlight readable and has a nice tough anti-scratch surface on the glass and the important thing it is, is sunlight readable so when you're out in the bright sunshine much better than your phone you can read it in the sunlight so that's the unit on the front with the glass screen if i turn the unit over on the back i've mentioned about this spine on the back that you use to connect the any accessories you buy things like the the belt clips you can buy carabiner clips and the bike mount that you get free with the unit one of our favorites is a backpack tether that you can buy that allows you to put it on the front strap of your backpack or your rucksack I take the back off the unit we can see it's simply powered by two AA batteries. We recommend using high-end rechargeable batteries that have a minimum capacity of 2,000, sorry, 2,300 mAh. Obviously, you can put in your own throwaway batteries. We tend to recommend lithium over alkaline batteries. And behind those batteries, there's batteries as an SD card slot where the map card goes, the micro SD card for your maps. So I'm just going to put the back back on the unit. Just lock that in place. The unit's IPX7, so it's totally weatherproof. It can be in the rain all day with no problems at all. On the back, there's a little rubber cover that just protects the USB connection slot. So I'm just going to put the buffer back on, sorry, the rubber shield back on, just so you can see the rubber shield on the unit. And again, that just protects the unit from knocks and scrapes. So that's just a quick look at the unit on the outside. So we call this a multi-activity unit. What do we mean by multi-activity? So when you turn the unit on, it has preset profiles such as hike. We can see at the top of the screen here. When I touch the screen to the right, we've got bike, tour cycle, mountain bike. And then there's other ones that are preset hunt, fish, climb, 
geocache. You can't add your own profiles or delete the ones that are there or rename them. Now all of the Garmin units that we sell, all handheld units, will let you do various activities. But what we like with these preset activities that you can then change and, and make them very personal to what you're doing they're really quick to access whereas the older units you have to go into bottom menus and do lots of settings and it was a little bit more long-winded to get to these individual profiles so we like the fact you can get them straight away by just swiping the screen left or right so what do we mean by changing these profiles or personalizing them so just to give you an example so we've got the 1 to 50k map card in this unit but it also has the european mapping so if i touch on the little picture here of the person hiking to bring up the map I've got the 1 to 50 map on the screen here so I can zoom in and out on the map nice and simple using the little plus and minus I can move the map around to look further ahead or behind me so you can see it's a nice detailed 1 to 50 ordnance survey map we've got the pink dotted lines for our footpath so it's got the 1 to 50 map on the height profile that's the way I've set it up if I swipe the screen to the right, we've got the electronic compass what we mean by electronic compass when the unit's held flat or upright the map will orientate the way you're heading if you've set it to what we call track up so in older units that don't have electronic compasses you had to be moving for the unit to orientate the way you were heading with an electronic compass you don't have to be moving you can be stationary and hold the unit upright or flat so if I swipe the screen again to the right got a nice trip computer here with lots of data things like distance of how far you've traveled speed etc but what's nice is you can touch on any of these data boxes I think we've just got these ones locked so I'm just going to unlock the data boxes we can now touch on these data boxes and you can select from various categories so if you wanted more information about your height this unit does have a built-in barometric altimeter which is something that you don't get on the touch 25 so more accurate height data you can change some of the data boxes to do with your ascent or descent so you can make it again very individual to what you see on the data boxes if i swipe again to the right if we were outside walking or cycling now we'd see our elevation plot on the altimeter graph here the barometric altimeter meter graph and finally we're back to the map page Now, what I'm now going to show you if I go back to the home page and go to one of the cycle profiles so we've got to our cycle and touch on the picture of the person cycling I've now got a different style map on the screen what I've actually got on the screen is the topoactive European mapping so again you're being very personal you're cycling you don't want to see the ordnance survey map you might find that just a little bit too detailed so I've set it up for this topo European mapping which again I can now move around have a look at what's further ahead or behind me so this is a great map I think for when you're in an urban environment you're around towns and villages or obviously if you're a road cyclist it does have footpaths as well marked on it just not as detailed as an ordnance survey map if I touch on where we've got this dotted line here the little drone pin appears and it tells me that it's a trail so I can see that's actually a footpath on this map the other thing I've changed in the cycle profile I've put at the top of a map page a data box that shows me my speed and distances etc and if that's in the way I can hide that box or bring it back so again you're just being individual by changing that profile to suit what you would like to see it could even be in the data boxes you want to see different things when you're cycling so I've changed what you see at the top of the data box here um, in the trip computer to what I had on the hike one so it's another way you can just personalize the unit the other thing that's important to remember um, with these units I haven't mentioned but when you're in the things like the cycle profile and you're navigating on the roads it'll actually work like a car sat now and take you from A to B with turn by turn arrows on the map page when you're road cycling so what we've done in the to our cycle profile is set it up so that it's set up for cycling to navigate us on the roads whereas in the hiking profile it's set to just draw straight lines across the ordnance survey map um, because that doesn't have the routable off-road data so again it's just personalizing what you're actually doing on the unit and if I go to say the climb one just to give you an idea there's one here called climb now what I've done with this unit even though it's got the 1 to 50 mapping I've actually used something called a Garmin bird's eye voucher to download some more detailed 1 to 25 mapping which is your explorer map so I'm just going to bring over a bird's eye voucher to show you what we mean by that just put the unit down so we sell bird's eye vouchers from Garmin bird's eye select vouchers 1999 and using this voucher registered to your eTrex touch unit you can download 
download 3,000 square kilometres, which is about the equivalent of the Lake District National Park of Ordnance Survey 1 to 25 mapping. So it means you've still got the 1 to 50 mapping for all of the country, but if there's somewhere you do some more intense hiking, climbing in, you can download some extra mapping that's 1 to 25. So what I've basically done on the unit here, when I'm on the hike, pro uh, sorry, on the climb profile, I've set it so that I actually see a 1 to 25 map. So when I move this map further ahead now, I can see I've got a green dotted line for a footpath instead of the pink dotted line we had on the 1 to 50 mapping, and we can see field boundaries. So this just shows you that you can still download some extra more detailed mapping if you've got certain areas you want a little bit more detail than the 1 to 50 map that the unit comes with. So again, it's just been a little bit more individual. And the last profile I'm going to show you is geocache. So if you're interested in geocaching, it's basically a, a hobby, a sport where millions and millions of geocaches, which is hidden treasure under tree trunks in the countryside often is a common place you find these hidden. It's basically a grid reference on the ground where you're finding often a little plastic tub with a log book where you log to say you found that geocache. It's great to get people outdoors, whether it be adults or kids, going outdoors and making part of their walk finding a geocache. You can join geocaching.com for free on their website, but when you buy an eTrex Touch unit, it comes preloaded with 200 150,000 geocaches on the unit already so you can have a go at geocaching without even registering yourself on their account. So on the geocaching profile what's different when I bring the map up we actually have what we call this geocaching compass at the top which means when you're out walking on the geocaching profile any geocaches you've got loaded the unit will always display on this compass at the top the name of the closest geocache to where you are the distance away from you and this little pointer on the compass is pointing you in the direction if you walked in a straight line to find that geocache. If I simply touch on that box at the top now to say yep I want to find that geocache it then brings a list of the geocaches in your unit in distance so order of distance away from you I can touch on the one I want to go and find it shows me it on the map and I can simply touch on go and then I'll get a straight line to navigate to on the screen of the GPS to find that geocache so it's a great way to get started with geocaching the fact the unit comes with 250,000 geocaches preloaded so I hope that's just given you a nice idea of why we have these different profiles and how you can set them up just a little bit different to do with what data boxes you see or what type of map you see depending on, on mapping you've got with the unit. I'm just going to go back to the hike one now and I don't know if you've noticed while I've been doing this video while I've been on these different profiles I keep getting this message flashing up at the bottom of the screen what, we start, like this feature. Start. It's basically because my unit's locked onto satellites it's telling me that do you want to start recording now the advantage of recording where you walk or cycle etc if an emergency you need to do a backtrack to the start of your route this unit will allow you to. Other than that it may just be that when you get home you want to connect your GPS to your computer and look at where you've just cycled or, or walked <clears throat> and an extra feature with this unit because it's the touch 35 it has an extra feature over the touch 25 where you can sync it directly using Bluetooth with the Garmin Connect app on a mobile device on an Android phone compatible smartphone iPad and using this Connect app when you've done a cycle ride or walk you can actually see that data synced automatically with the app and look at your distances and altimeter graphs etc of where you've just been because it's got Bluetooth built in. So if I simply press start there, that's all we need to do. And at the end of your walk or cycle ride, you simply flash up from the bottom of the screen, swipe up, sorry, press stop, and then you get the option to save your track recording. So actually when I swipe up from the bottom of the screen here, I can see this little Bluetooth logo. So I'm actually just going to go into the settings in the unit. So if we're going to set up where we've got Bluetooth, I've actually got this connected to my mobile phone using Bluetooth. So again, this is one of the extra features that you don't get on the 25 that you get on the Touch 35. You can connect it to your phone, sync with the Garmin Connect app. If I touch here where it says notifications, <clears throat> so I can hide or show notifications, what that basically does... It allows, if someone's trying to ring you, send you a, a text or an email, and you've got notifications set up on your phone, when you've got it paired with your GPS device, when you're out walking or cycling, you'll see those notifications appear on the screen that someone's either trying to ring you 
or send you a message so your phone can be nice and safe in your pannier bag or your rucksack whereas the GPS of course is waterproof you still see those messages coming through so that's another advantage of having the 35 over the 25. Now while we're talking about the Bluetooth feature that we've got turned on I'm just going to show you something else that you can add on to the unit. Garmin have some accessories called the ENT plus Bluetooth accessories. One that we really like is this little Tempe sensor. So with this little Tempe sensor because the Touch 35 has the Bluetooth function you can pair this with the Touch 35 and then you can change one of the data boxes um, to temperature and you can see what the external temperature is by connecting this Tempe sensor to your jacket or your rucksack so that's another advantage of the touch 35 also if you are a cyclist Garmin do some other Bluetooth devices for monitoring cadence yeah yeah how many time revolutions you pedal your speed if you were using your bike indoors for training they do a speed um, Bluetooth speed adapter that goes on the back wheel of your bike that'll connect with the touch 35 and there's also a heart rate monitor as well you can't connect them to the touch 25 because it doesn't have the Bluetooth function so I hope that's been useful just looking at the Bluetooth functionality of the device so we've looked at the various different accessories that go with the device. Um, sorry, I've mentioned the Bluetooth accessories. So that's the main difference with this unit over the Touch 25. You can add on those Bluetooth um, ENT devices from Garmin. You can sync it with the Garmin Connect app on your phone. Again, I mentioned, just a reminder, this one has the altimeter built in, so you will get more accurate height data because of the altimeter. You do need to do some calibration from time to time. So if I just go into Setup, you have an altimeter setting here. And you can put in, you can say you want to calibrate the altimeter. And if you know your current ele elevation, it's, it's worth just on a regular basis, you should really calibrate the altimeter. So overall, we find this a great little compact unit. And I think paired with the, the extra sort of GB 1 to 50 mapping, you've got Ordnance Survey mapping for the whole of Great Britain. The fact the unit comes with a European mapping, we think great. And it's got a lot of features that you get with the higher end units with regards to connecting to the Bluetooth and connecting to this Connect app on your phone. And just remember, if you do buy a GPS unit from us, I'm just going to show you some of the paperwork that we give you with the unit. So it's the Touch 35 here, and I'm just going to bring the paperwork over. So so we've mentioned the setting up of the unit which we do for you before you get the unit. You also get from GPS training our own getting started with your Etrex Touch Unit Guide which has lots of useful information to get you going with the units. So that's one thing that we give you. We also give you access to our GPS training online training resource online which is full of videos on using your unit and guides on using the unit and the free planning software called Basecamp so you'll get your unique username and password and it lists all of the videos and guides that are on our online training resource that you get access to for a year for free for buying a unit from us. And also we give you our own guide on using the base camp planning software. So we have a guide for either Windows or Mac, depending what you are. You just need to tell us in the delivery instructions if you buy a unit from us, whether you use a Mac or Windows computer. And then you get the guide that we've written on it just to get you started with the base camp software. And remember, as part of your purchase, you get our gold support package with £120, which means as well as all the setting up in the guides, you get two free training webinars from GPS Training. You basically do online from home. We do them every month. You do them in an evening. You can see our computer and hear us. You don't need a microphone. You just need speakers or a headphone. And we talk you through using the unit of the Basecamp software. You also get email and telephone support from us as well, of course, the, all of the setup guides and the online training resource. So I hope you find this video useful on Garmin's eTrex Touch. 35 with a full 1 to 50 mapping and also that European mapping. If you want to see further information on this unit, if you go to our gpstraining.co.uk website, look under the heading GPS store and down the left hand side you'll see GPS units with 1 to 50 OS mapping. If you click on that link you'll see the Touch 35 listed with the 1 to 50 mapping. If you're not needing the extra features such as the smartphone, adding on the Bluetooth devices and the altimeter, obviously we do have the Touch 25T with the 1 to 50 mapping that you can have a look at which is a little bit cheaper than the 35T. But I hope you find these extra features of the 35T really useful and thanks for watching this video.